So we're going to open our April 5th regular select board meeting uh, via Zoom. The meeting will be available on the FCAT uh, channel. If you go to YouTube and look for FCAT Media, uh, you can watch it through video on demand, or you can uh, watch it on uh, channel uh, 12, uh, channel 23 on, uh, on your Comcast uh, dial. Um, so we'll open this meeting. We'll start off with approving the minutes of March 29th. Did everybody get to look at those minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were fine. Yeah, I thought they looked good. Okay, so uh, we'll make a motion to approve them. I see uh, Eric is saying yes, and Phil. Yes. I heard him say yes, and I say yes. So we'll that's call that a unanimous vote. Um, how about meetings attended by select board members? And Erica, we usually start off with you. Um, none this week. Mm. Phil. I had none this week uh, either, but I'm going to pay for it because I already have one every single night this week. <laughs> Yeah, pay for it, right. Well, I had one this week and it was about an hour ago and it was a conservation site visit of another house being built in Conway. So there are a number of homes that have been built either late last year or right now. So uh, I love seeing young couples building new houses uh, on various pieces of land around town. Uh, and it's getting them, harder do you ask harder. them what Do you ask them what brought them to Conway? Uh, no, but... I mean, you know, we mostly want to talk to them about where there are intermittent streams or perennial streams or, you know, various co conservation commission issues. Because uh, there's an ongoing debate, uh, debate about the influence of Zillow and, the, you know, test score ratings and getting people into the town. So I'm interested in data in that. Uh, well, I think that's universally uh, assumed or believed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Conway should be proud of it. But you know, there are people who don't see it as a good thing. Maybe because yeah, uh, it's not. <laughs> how about public comments? Do we have any public here? I don't think we have any public to make a comment. Uh, and Mary, you're welcome, but not Conway public. Um, so. For old business, we're going to start off with you. Mary, are you here? I, I see you logged in. There she is. Wow. Um, so we're here to talk about the carbon credit study. Hi, Mary. Are you connected? You're not muted. Can you hear us? Are you? Yes, I can. Are you talking? <laughs> Sorry. Having okay. Technological difficulties. Hi, everyone. So, hey, Bob. So sorry for your loss. My heart's thank you very been much. With, my heart's been with you. Oh, thank you. I, I, I just can tell you that. My wife died doing something she loved more than anything. So there's a very good sign to it. So that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good way to help yourself heal it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, so we're here to support your carbon credit oh. uh, program. Uh, I saw that, I mean, Tom wrote us a note. We would like to add another name to it that wasn't on it when we talked about it before. Um, I'm fine with the contract as it is. I have a subcontractor because it's a lot of work. I couldn't do it alone. And he should be joining us tonight. He was on his way home <laughs> when I last talked to him. But um, that the Conway kid? Pardon? Is that the, con he, is that the con he, wor he works for the um, company. He's, he's sort of the junior guy. Mike Berry is the principal. And Colin Mete lives in your town. His uncle right. actually is one of the owners in your town. Owns 45 acres. And uh, yeah, we're going to launch this week. We're going to get on it. It's an exciting time. There's a lot of money being put into this market right now, which is kind of cool. One question. Oh, do, you, do you have any questions as a governing body? Uh, um, 
you know, the, so I, I, I've been the one that's been calling property owners and meeting with property owners and, yeah. and trying to breathe life into this whole thing. Um, and um, I'm, I'm kind of really struck by how personal everybody's relationship is with their own land and how like the idea of doing sort of public Zoom meetings to get people's attention or whatever just seems so inadequate to the task at hand. Yeah, um, we're, we're understanding that we're gonna have to, if it's Zoom, it's Zoom between us and that individual owner as a way to see a face-to-face -face conversation because I agree with you, it's, a, it's an ethic and a relationship that they have with their property and we wanna respect that. Um, I think the challenge is to try to forge the aggregate, to try to convince people that they're going to, they have a, kind of a continuum of management, management options, but they are going to have to form this aggregate and agree to stay in a, in a contract for a length of time. And that is, I think, our biggest challenge is how to create that trust between a whole bunch of different owners that own for a whole bunch of different reasons. Yeah. I'd love to, if you could share your list with people you have contacted already who are interested. Phil, if you've been talking with people. Yeah. Um, Should I well, call you, you it, privately or? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, pro probably because I. Okay. Several, several have given um, permission when, when explicitly asked to, you know, yeah, we're all for it. You know, Jack Lockhead, um, um, Murf, George Murphy and Janet um, Shays, C-H-A-Y-E-S. Um, yeah. So th they are, they are, um, they, they are uh, over a hundred acre landowners that are wanting to know the town to know that they support this. Um, um, and I see that Mike has joined us. He's my business partner in this endeavor, Mike Barry, based on Mike. Fourth Street. Hello, Mike. Mike, what, I'll catch up a little bit. What we've been talking about is Phil Cantor, one of the select board members, has been talking with people in town and has kind of a little subset of interested participants. Great. And he, he feels that a public... Zoom meeting may not be the initial outreach, the best initial outreach approach, because his sense of his conversations to date are that people have a love and a, a, a private relationship with their land, and he doesn't want to interfere with that or offend it in any way. And I guess I do agree with him. One thing we're thinking about, Phil, is when we get to less all form an aggregate, there's protocol and mandates that are going to be universal in order to participate. That might be done with a presentation on Zoom, maybe a PowerPoint right. presentation Absolutely. that, that yeah. is really educational and informational. Yeah. I agree. And I think, but I agree, and, and please chime in, Mike, that perhaps that initial contact to try to persuade them to see the benefits of this participation may be better done one-on-one. -on -one. So more, yeah, more individual basis um, approach to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Mary, yeah. I have a, a different question. Um, you, you know, th there's a lot of talk about trees right now. <laughs> uh, saving trees, not cutting trees, and especially trees and solar or all, all of that stuff. Yeah. And, and among that discussion, people bring up carbon credits. Yeah. And there are a fair number of those folks who were so opposed to cutting down trees that believe that carbon credits are, I'll, I'll say they believe they're really a sham for foresters getting in there and still doing a lot of cutting. Um, okay, let's see how to answer that. <laughs> and, and this issue kind of came up in our talks with you about our state forests and the fact that we had hired a forester to come in and write yeah. our plan. and what you were going to force into our plan against our will and all of those same. So, but we didn't enforce anything. Favorite. I understand. No, no, I'm not saying that, but, yeah. but that, that's the perception when you, when you see Forrester and yeah. 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 I think that, um, I don't know what your background is, but, 
I was trained as a scientist. I understand the scientific method. So the scientific method says you have a hypothesis. You do not have to prove that it's 90% true, 80% true. All you have to prove is that your T test comes at one or under, and then you can say this is the truth. So there is a lot of literature out there, a lot of peer reviewed science. Dr. Muma's material is peer reviewed. It is a, one of the truths. Another one of the truths is having a forest that is a balance between carbon accumulators and carbon storage units. The accumulators are trees that range from 35 to 75 years of age. Trees grow allometrically, which is somewhat like an S-curve. So they grow really fast at a certain age and then they level off and they continue to grow with acceleration, positive acceleration, but it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you're pulling CO2 out of the air, you want trees of all these ages. Do, do large trees store a lot of carbon? Yes, that is a truth. So you want large trees and you want a well-stacked large tree forest. I think one of our challenges is to present the full range of information and data. And if you participate in an aggregate, you are not mandated how you're gonna manage your land. That's something that you can decide. You can decide to preserve it all, just grow it and do nothing. You can decide to cut your mean annual increment every year, what you're growing every year through a 10 or 20 year window. So I think if people understand that we would not, if an aggregate was formed, the, the project proponent, the person who kind of facilitates and, and makes sure you're meeting all your protocol will not dictate your management philosophy. That's still going to be yours. What we pr propose to do, as we stated in, um, in our fee, is educate them about the possibilities and the avenues in. If they want to participate or not, that's up to them. Is it a sham? Is it paying to pollute? Personally, I think so. Is it better than nothing? Yeah, I kind of think that too. So that's my roundabout answer. <laughs> I don't know if I addressed your question directly. Well, I'm really saying that because I think it's going to come up, just like it came yeah. up in all of our talks about the forest plan. These issues are so complex that all this stuff is going to come up. But I think yeah. the, the place where we as a select board should always be coming from is what's the most we can do to help the most people. And and th this this falls under that rubric. And it's it also, um, you know, what, what I particularly enjoyed is going up to some of the large landowners that were opponents of the Community Preservation Act. Uh, because of the extra burden that it that that it places on large landowners to basically fund the uh, a lot of the goodies wish lists of those of us that do are not lar large landowners, um, and, and so this this was you know I think one one of the things that I was able to say is like this is a way that the sort of the town can facilitate giving back in that direction, um, because this is at, right now to, at the beginning is geared towards large landowners. Um, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and that's one of the ways that like, I, you know, I, I spoke with people that are self-identified as Trump supporters that are interested in participating. Um, more than one that are significant landowners and whose participation would really, really improve the project. Um, and, and I'm excited about that, but I don't know, I, 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 I don't know how much of any of this debate I wanna be involved in with with any of them um it's just enough to know that it wouldn't really alter their current forest management plans um and they'd get paid for it um and so that's that sounds like something that's interesting to a lot of people and i'm okay just keeping it um you know on that level for those people that can relate on that level um, and i see that colin did join us well he just disappeared but he was here <laughs> that's, Hi, that's the conway kid no, as they here. called you earlier <laughs> but he is here um one thing to get back to uh, bob's question there's a term that um you have to be able to uh, validate this concept of additionality and what additionality is in the carbon market is you have to show that the way you manage your forest is above and beyond business as usual. So when I come across the, the, the antis, I call them, for lack of a better term, 
it is in business as usual because you can't get in and because they verify you, they audit you every year. And you have to be able to show that the way you manage your forest is not what is done business as usual locally in your community. So that, that's one argument that we can hold on to when we are attacked in that way or brought into debate about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of the eventualities. Yeah. Sometimes I get personal when I hear about the Forrester thing because we're not all the same. And, and if you go and walk on the Fortier piece that Mike actually cut, the stocking that was left there is really amazing. It's a well-stocked, maturing grove of hemlock and pine. And you couldn't at all compare it to Cole's lumber, uh, what happened up there after the tornado, the amount of wood that came out. But I, you know, I, I, just to finish my, my line of thinking on all this is that if you want people in this town to sign up, it will require a personal visit, period. Um, okay. Um, I, and that's, you know, that's, yeah, that's and, just and it's, once it, again it, in the money it's that, it, it's that level of intimacy that is required for real um the money in our grant is covering that outreach but exactly that's what and um what we propose to do is is like divvy it up i mean a lot of the people mike already works for i work for some of the people and to um leverage those relationships and what we had hoped to do is sort of do some of our homework and create our, our sales pitch, <laughs> like what we want to say. So it's a universal message to each of the people we approach. Do you agree with that, Mike? Yeah, yeah, certainly do. And I, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, at the beginning of this process, you know, we're, we're going to have sort of a, a, a filter applied as we reach out to people and try to contact them where, you know, there'll, there'll be certain categories, you know, a subset of, of the group that, you know, we're looking at, it's, it's potentially around 120 landowners, you know, townwide that we've kind of, it looks like, you know, are in that, that category of 40 acres or more. Um, so what, you know, there'll be a set of those people that we reach out to and simply say, you know, there's no way they would ever be interested. So, you know, we can certainly, <laughs> you know, not spend a lot of time further kind of trying to reach out further to that group and then you know we might have people who are very excited to learn more and want to hear more and you know those will be you know a high priority and certainly a you know a, another set of people that'll be in the middle they're not sure we need to talk more they need to learn more to to realize what we are actually talking about and and uh, you know what the commitment might be so so the, the, the interesting first part from my perspective will be to see you know, how many people fit into each of those categories to determine, you know, what, what that outreach, outreach effort, you know, would look like on a one-on-one on -one kind of basis. Mary, what else do you need from us? I'm wondering if you have, I'm hearing you, Phil, and so I'm thinking we may adjust and do um, calls for the first contact. Do you, does the town have a phone book, like Ashfield has this phone book for the, the community so that we could get some of the numbers that won't be easily available? We do not have a town phone. Um, we okay. can help you. Uh, not as such. We, we may be able to, you know, uh, put together. Uh, it, you yeah. know, if we have a list, we can put something together for some people. Okay. So if we gave you the list that we're working with, you could maybe fill in some of the numbers we're missing. Okay, that works. Yeah, yeah. And then the other, the other thing, Mary, is you know, a, a month or so ago, we were on that call with the Family Forest Foundation. Yeah. And and um, you know, and they're they're eager to have a second call and see how they can help and to you know whatever. But that that to me like seemed like a way to move this forward and to increase the number of landowners that can participate ultimately. Um, and and I look at this too as long for like what you're doing. This is round one. You know, we're, exactly. we're, we, we've already spoken to Williamstown about, town about potential for rounds two and three. And so, so I look at this as sort of, this is the initial sort of figuring it out how it works kind of a thing. And then hopefully at, at the end of this, we're positioned so that we can do it um, um, so that it's more, it's more self-sustaining or not self-sustaining, but it can be pushed down the road with less effort. Um, and, uh, 
you know, so, so I don't know how, what, what you all, what you, Colin and Michael thought about that, um, but. I can, I can give my answer, then Mike and Colin, feel free to jump in. Um, the AFF TNC project is, is interesting. What they're trying to do is form a massive aggregate in, in the state of Massachusetts. So they're pushing for thousands of acres. Um, our N equals 120, like possible potential participants of 120, that comes up to about 12,000 acres off of Mike did the initial database. So TNC is trying to get 30, 40,000 acres of land. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna pull everybody together, have individual contracts, yet it enters the market as one massive aggregate, but they are gonna own the credits and the owners are going to be paid incentive practice payments, minimal payments through a 20 year period. That is certainly one of the options we would report on. You had suggested we explore one or two avenues into the market or more. That is one way into the market. The owners would not own the credits. Um, TNC and AFF own the credits. So that means the money that's made T equals zero right now, the first year in, goes to TNC and all of the money that accrues for the ingrowth, for the mean annual increment, and then the additional credits that are generated through the 20 years, those are owned by TNC. So the money goes there. I view that as exploring that market fully, leveraging the relationship we have with Laura and Jonathan Shearer to understand the money and then present it to you in the analysis as one of the approaches. If you own the credits, the potential payout through your commitment, your time in the market could be higher to your private owners. I would feel our fiduciary responsibility to this grant would be pre to present to you that kind of analysis. And feel free to jump in, Mike or Colin. But I do agree we should talk again to Laura and Jonathan. Yeah, we, we've got uh, some time limitations here. So let me just remind the board that the contract uh, two copies of the contract uh, are here in the office uh, ready to sign. Okay. So do, do, we need, do we need a vote on the fact that we're going to sign it? No, we already did that I think, I last, we did. last yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now you can actually sign them. Okay. So, so, so Phil and, and Eric, are, are you good to continue yeah. on or do you have more questions? No, but Colin, okay. you're actually I'm a Conway set. resident. Yeah, Colin, uh, Colin, you're a Conway resident? All right, yeah, you get bonus I, I walk, points. I, I walk by you all the time with your little dogs. I, That's right. <laughs> I thought you looked familiar. You get extra yeah. bonus points. You get extra bonus points. <laughs> Do you have any questions, Colin or Mike? I have one comment um, just regarding, we've already kind of jumped in a little bit as far as kind of looking at the um, you know, the assessor's data and coming up with the, the landowner list and such. And Colin has <laughs> sent a request over to the assessor to say, you know, is there any of the information that we've got? You know, we've got the, you know, the latest that we have access to, but we've already heard from the assessor that that might be a little bit dated. So we've kind of requested from them to say, you know, is there any updated owner information or contact information such as addresses? So I, I wonder if there can be some official town correspondence from the select board to the assessors to say, we're not just some random forester out of the blue asking questions. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and so actually, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, Michael, because the list, you know, we did generate, I'm sure I, you probably saw this, the list of 100 acre uh, owners. But what I found out was that even that was really inadequate because that's just the list of single parcel 100 acre owners. Okay. And there are quite a few multiple parcel owners that add up to over uh, I, I did a, acres. I did a two part. I did a two part thing with what I looked at. So I started with the ones that met a 40 acre minimum. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I, I was using 40 acres, not a hundred. Okay, um, but I, you know, so I started with that and then I also filtered my list by owner to say, you know, what oh. landowners might have multiple parcels that add up to that amount. So we Very did good. include it, it and it added a handful um, yeah. for sure, but not, not too, too many, but I did consider that uh, factor as well. So, so as a part of that, I was also curious, you know, might the assessors have contact information such as phone numbers as well? Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if anybody knows or if that's a question worth asking at least to them. Um, I, I, I can ask and get back to you on that. That'd be great. Okay. And I just have one final question. I, okay. I understand you want to move on. Thank yeah. you for all this time. How do you want us to be accountable to you? How often should we check in, let you know what's happening? We could do it through email reports sent to all, all members of the select board. What is it you're looking for for accountability? Um, my, my my take on it is you know not just like accountability but that um the the initial outreach i think there might be some uh, some working together kind of a thing might be helpful that huh? th there there are people on that list that bob knows well there are people on that list that i know well and there are people on that list that erica knows well and that um for for any one of them if there's a heads up that that now's the time that, that you wanted to talk to them um, there, there's a good number of people that if it's preceded by a phone call from their local person that they've known for years, that would really increase the chances of success, in my okay. opinion. Um, would you want to be included, like the three-way conversation? Or yeah, I mean, I, okay. So All if right. we gave so, if we gave you our our total list with you know names and such, you know, and you guys could kind of check off you know, put, put your initials next to it on each of you might make an initial contact. And yeah. then, you know, we would be aware of that, that process kind of happening. I think that, I, I think that's really going to increase um, participation. I really do. And Good idea. All right. Okay. We can do that. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for supporting our collaborative business endeavor. And we're excited to do this. <laughs> We are too. I'm yeah. really glad that you got the bid. Thank I was you. I was really nervous putting this out to bid because I was afraid it wasn't going to be you. But um, so I was glad. Thank you, Phil. Well, good night. Good night, good night now. Thank you all. Thanks for nice coming, to everybody. Night. Night. Before we do our other piece of old business, could we uh, welcome Laura DeLuca and and thank you for. Uh, you know, helping out our towns with something that's just as complicated and and as the chair of a committee, I can tell you it's it's hard to half the time take the notes and post the meetings and post the minutes and handle all of that. And I think for the select board, there'd be other things that you do. So, uh, welcome to the select board meeting. And thank you. I think a thank motion you. to a point is what's in order here. I move to appoint Lara DeLuca. I'll second. Do her appointed job. And so I take it Phil votes aye, and I take it Erica votes aye, mm -hmm. and I'll vote aye. So thank you. You're welcome, and thank you, and, and congratulations. I understand that's a motion to appoint until June 30th, 2022, at the rate of $20 an hour. I think I heard that. Yes. <laughs> Sounds great. Don't move. Thank you. Thank you all. Great to be here. Okay. Thanks. If you Thanks. have any Welcome. issues, you know, come and talk to us. Uh, it's wonderful. Sounds good. Thank very, you. very needed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have one more piece of old business, which is closing the warrant for the annual town meeting. Uh, I think we're, we've gotten most of the way through the warrant, uh, all of the uh, items. We talked about a couple just a couple of warrant items that you're going to still add, Tom. Yeah, and and including those. The, this is mostly to make sure that new money stuff doesn't come in at this point. Uh, really, it should have come in a long, long time ago. And um, but you know you can always you can always make an exception. But this kind of lets lets me and other people know that what we've got now is what we're dealing with. So it won't cast the warrant in stone. I mean, the items are going to get moved around, but but it, it does just mean we're not accepting new warrant articles. Do you have any issue with that, Phil, Erica? No, I'm fine with closing it up. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we're gonna we're gonna officially close the warrant, and I'll take that as a second. And I see Erica's aye. voting aye, and Phil voted aye, so that's unanimous. So on Thank to you. some 
new business. Um, Alan, we're going to get to you very soon, but we are, we have a couple more things to do. Or actually, why don't, why don't we, why yeah. don't we do, open the, uh, the finance committee meeting right now? The, uh, yeah, and, uh, and then we can get back to the, the new business at the end. Is that okay with you? Uh, do you have a, a, a quorum, Alan? I see Correct. Three. Yes and yes. C3. Great. Uh, I do see Jan on here. Um, do you think we have time for, we could take Jan first? Yeah. Well, she's on for some of the finance committee items. Okay. Well, that's good then. <laughs> so we, uh, do you have a general update, Tom, for, for the budget? And yes, there, there was, there was one item, um, that came up during the uh, the uh, interim town administrator preliminary screening committee meetings, and that was that it would help if the interim could overlap with whoever gets hired as the permanent person. Um, and uh, we thought that if 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 we approved uh, a month of that, then. You know, maybe it would be a month, maybe it would be less than that, but at least we would have the money to pay the person if we needed somebody to to have have that kind of overlap. I'm only going to have probably two weeks with the interim, and that's not going to be a whole lot. Um, and I, I think the interim is going to learn a whole lot about what's going on and closing out the the fiscal year and things like that that, that can be passed on. So I was I was hoping that the select board and finance committee could approve. Uh, the figure is uh, six thousand two hundred fifty dollars, which is um, the maximum that a month of overlap would uh, would require, and that would just just be added to the the line for town administrator salaries and wages, which also covers my assistant. It'll cover the interim. It'll cover the new town administrator. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, I have a little bit of a problem with where we're adding it because it makes it look like Tom is getting a raise for the town administrator salaries. Again, you know, we're, we're having to describe all the reasons why it went up. We had a big conversation about that last week. Well, I think, I mean, but we can explain that. Yeah. No, right. I mean, I... No, I think it's I think it's money well spent. Well, we're going to have a period of time in between uh, the town administrator and the acting, so we'll be quote unquote a savings, won't there? No, no the the in, the interim should be coming in um, two weeks before I leave, uh, so that I can explain how the everything works and the filing system and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and it's really not a lot. Two weeks um, is not a lot of time. It would be much better to have a month or, or even more. Um, but all I'm asking for is a month for, for the transition between the interim. Uh, now, and the, the, the way the interim gets paid less than Tom. It, it, I know, but I, and, and, um, you know that 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 will be worked out with the contract negotiations. Um, what how the interim will be paid um, for that overlap is that there was a gap between when Lisa Tarowski left and Louise Beckett came on. So there's additional money in that account that can cover uh, an interim overlap in in this fiscal year. But but this would be for next fiscal year, the sixty two fifty. Will the interim be paid health insurance or not? Do you know? Uh, no, it would be an unbenefited position. So, I mean, there's a savings right there. I think if we explained a town meeting that way, I wouldn't see it being an issue at all. Well, that savings would be for this year. Yep. Okay. So. What's next? 
uh, a, a motion to approve from both the Finance Committee and the Select Board would, would be in order because we already approved Article 2, and this is an amendment to what was approved before. So the okay. Finance Committee should go first then, right? It's up to you. I mean, if, I'm seeing Phil and Erica shaking their heads, so while you guys are thinking about it, we could approve it, and you could continue to think about it. Right. Roy and Steve, if you have any questions while they're voting, you can you can uh, we can chat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an issue with it, so. So I'm gonna I'll make a motion that we add sixty two fifty to the administrator budget to cover the uh, the overlap in July of the interim and the permanent. Second. So I see three eyes: Phil, Erica, and I. <laughs> So what do you think, Alan? What do you think, Steve, Roy? Well, uh, well I, I have a, Steve and Roy, are you uh, have any further questions or discussion? I don't. I don't. Okay. So I make a motion that we approve the 6250 budget light item for the uh, transition between acting and uh, existing town administrator. Anyone secured a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So the motion carries 3-0 in favor. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And, and just to clarify, this is for the overlap between the interim and the administrator who is to be hired. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. It's more like fiscal year 22 into 23 than right now. Yeah, nice. So the second piece of this was um, the, the rest to relook at the money articles that we didn't do yet. And I think we didn't, the, one, uh, the two that I can, you know, that are high on my list are highway paving and, and the highway truck. And then we were going to talk about the pay raise. So may, maybe the representatives from the Capital Improvements Planning Committee can say something about that. <laughs> well, that's me. Um, so, I mean, we talked about the truck. The truck is two hundred and twenty thousand. We uh, we we moved off all of the other vehicles and just left this one vehicle. It's uh, it's replacing a really old uh, nineteen ninety eight uh, heavy duty truck. Um, and I, we've talked a couple times of the reason why why it's becoming why we have trucks that have gotten so old and why this is important. Uh, when Ron took over the trucks we had. Um, we're getting old, but he thought that the, the emissions in these, in the trucks that were available in the early two thousands were unreliable and, uh, they were causing the truck to spend a lot of time in the shop trying to get their emissions to work. And so he wanted to postpone until they got fixed. And now he believes that they're fixed. We bought one last year and we're trying to buy another one this year. And. So that's the 220,000. It's only 220,000 because we're not, it's not four wheel drive like we talked about when Ron was on before. Uh, uh, just so you know, I am here. Hi, Ron. Hi. And just so everybody knows, the 220,000 that I'm asking for, <laughs> if I've got hold, I mean, I got the suppliers holding a spot. They tell me that, and now that I found out the meeting got moved to June, it's making things even more difficult, but price increases are going crazy right now. And they're gonna try to hold the price prices that I got. So it's, I mean, they're, they're talking like plow equipment going up 50%, 50% because of steel. Um, so if we don't do it now, we can be adding a lot of money to the next, you know, when we do it next. Just putting that out there. So that makes it important for us to approve it now, but then also to get it passed in town meeting. Yes. But what happens if, uh, you know, if that the figure is no longer good when we actually buy the truck, so, or try to buy a truck. Truck. 
Well, I'll just have to try to find some funding to cover the cost elsewhere. Just, But they're pretty confident because I've been in the process of dealing that they're pretty confident that they can hold the price as long as they know as soon as I, as, you know, as soon as town meeting's over. I did explain to them that town meeting got moved back a month and they weren't happy about that, but they said that they thought that they could still do it because we're in the process. Is this a vehicle? That I mean, is it the intent to borrow money for this? Right? Excuse me? No. Oh, no, the intent's to borrow money for the paving. Sorry. Right. Nothing. Right. Sorry. But Sorry. is this vehicle, is it is it more or less built and in the in state side already? Um, or oh, is no. This, it's not. No, no. No. Because, nope, you know, no I orders mean, have been put in for them. You know, the building materials are, in general, are spiking, but the thinking is that they are going to moderate back down. They're not going to stay so elevated. At least that's what I've what I've heard. I hope that's uh, true, because we're looking for another big vehicle next year, Roy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is building materials. I guess we're talking uh, steel, you know, that whole uh, mm. supply chain. Yeah. Um, or forged steel, or who knows? I don't know. Um, no, wood's taking off like crazy right now, too. Right, so exactly. I think it's everything that's out there right now. Yeah. Well, let's hope it uh, doesn't last forever. Okay. Um, and and the other the other piece of the highway budget had to do with the paving, and that we are going to borrow for. Uh, we, it's, it's, we, we lowered that down to, I think it was 170,000 to do a mile. It's the mile that goes up and over Dill Hill. If anybody knows that section of road, it's now, you know, one of the worst sections in town and getting worse. We, we did put in a, a grant to try to pay for two miles and, and, uh, we, we didn't get the grant. Are there any other, do you have any other questions about the truck or, or about the paving? There was an issue about uh, the borrowing costs that I know we wanted to talk to. Wasn't that the, somebody yeah. wanted to talk to Jan about? Yeah, we invited Jan on to talk about uh, how that borrowing would be impacting uh, the fiscal year 22 and going into 23 budget if we were to uh, borrow to finance the paving. And, uh, and also, could we have a vote on the truck, please, first? Okay, I'm going to make a motion for the select board that we approve uh, uh, spending 220000 for a new truck to replace the 1998 Ford L8000 heavy duty truck. Second. I say aye. Yes, so. I guess so. <laughs> um, I I don't know anything about trucks. I, I can barely, I can't even change my own oil. You should see the old truck, Phil. Okay, I'm going to take and, that. And the finance committee. By the select board. Oh, have, you, have you finished the vote for the select board? I, don't, I couldn't. I, no, Phil said I. Yes, he did. All right. Could I ask a question? Just uh, what kind of truck is it? We have a name this truck? The truck we're buying, yes. What, what kind of truck is it? Uh, Freightliner. It's like the last two that we just got. Okay. Any model or anything? Just, What's that? Just, I mean, usually you get some identification of what kind of truck you're going to buy for. I don't know anything about it. In other words, an actual quote which has the year, make, model number, and VIN and all that important stuff. No, they don't give you the is VIN. It, is yes, it a one do. ton? No, it's a. Uh, Forty. It'll be a six-wheel dump truck or a hook lift um, with a front plow and a changeable body. So I'll have a sander, slide-on sander, and a slide-on dump body. Fantastic. So the last truck you bought was a 108 SD. Is that going to be that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it'll probably be if. Yes, so it'll be a 108 <laughs> SD. I'm trying to keep them all pretty much the same so that, you know, the parts maintenance stuff is all the same. It makes life a lot easier. All right. I have a question, Ron. 
So we yeah. uh, replaced the 1998 truck. That means we have a 2000, what, 20 model a year, 21 model a year, and 22 model a year trucks. Is that no, right? we don't have a 20. We don't have a 22 yet. That's what we're looking to do. Yeah, I really assume okay. we assuming we do. We'll have a 2000. 20, yeah. 21, yep. 22 model year. What, what's remaining? The 2008 model year truck? Is that what would be the fourth truck in the fleet? No, the four, that one's been gone for several years. So um, we have three trucks, three six wheelers? No, we, ha we have four. We have a 2004 okay. International. Um, didn't, did you get the list that. Um, no, yes, I have mind. a list from the oh, capital. Um, that was helpful. Right. Yeah. But we don't have the replacement for that on the list yet. I, yeah, I don't sure. know when you would. Is that a 20-year life? What's what, that? What's the life the, on uh, 2004? 2004. It's a spare truck. It would not become a spare truck. And that would be moved up to the 12 years of the 2020. So that would get replaced when it's time, when theoretically it was time to replace the 2020. So that the trucks would all just get moved. You understand what I'm saying? Move down the so line. What, what would the yeah, year be it, for that replacement? 20, oh, what did I have? A 2032, I think it's one of those. That's what, oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I have too, according to what you're saying, fiscal year 2032. 2032 yes for the 2004 yeah yeah because that would just become a spare truck uh, that would um not see a whole lot of you <clears throat> it would become an antique it's 25 years of age and older so <laughs> yeah. well some of the other trucks already are too so <laughs> <laughs> all right so steve and roy and, and uh, rihanna have you any further questions or discussion um so um yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 so, uh, no so so do we know where where's the funding coming from for this it's coming from uh the, it's in the articles but it's capital like, improvement so stabilization from fund the stabilization yeah. fund all of it will come from there or we'll yeah we'll uh dicker that yeah. out all of it okay That's what it's there for. Right. Yes. So I wish we were only spending 100000 but uh, <laughs> those, that, we those days are gone. gone. We'd have to be going back in so, time, right? So, so next year, the Capital Improvement Stabilization Committee should present its funding plan for the capital items that it's proposing. Yeah. OK. Yeah, we're looking to replace that famous road grader. We spent 35000 a few years ago repairing the transmission. So that's coming up next year. Yeah. So we're expecting 300000 to be the replacement cost for that. All right. Tom, if I'm, I'm looking at Article 8, where it says, you know, see if the town will raise and appropriate, but it, it is going to come from stabilization, right? That just didn't get changed yet. And... Uh, but it's for 200. Well, if you, if, if you keep reading, it's just all possible funding options right. in the article, right? right. But the number is yes. 241,000. And was that just not changed? Because originally we were looking at 240, and I just don't know where 241,000 came from. Oh, sorry. You're right. Thank you. Oh no, that was the total. That was when we had the um, the twenty one thousand for the assessors. So thank you. I'll, I'll bring that down to the to the just the one. I, I I erased. I deleted the shelving system from the body of the article, but not from ah. the total. So I'll, ah. I'll I'll fix that. Okay. Great. So we uh, want to vote on the truck. Yep. Replacing the 1998 uh, yep. Ford L8 8000 heavy duty truck. So, um, my motion. All right. So, I make a motion that we approve the uh, 220000 for the purchase of the uh, replacement rather, of the 1998 uh, Ford L8000 uh, heavy duty truck. 
with plow. Anyone mm. care to second? Second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Rihanna, Aye. have you? Aye. Okay. So the motion carries 4 0 in favor. Great. Thank you. So, how about the paving now? Can we talk about the paving? Any issues? Anybody have questions for Ron? Well, Jan Warner. No, Jan Warner. Yeah. Yeah. Jan, are you here? I'm the here. Has, can... The banker has arrived. <laughs> I can talk about it. So um, I was asked to prepare a impact analysis and I did that um, as you asked for 170,000 for five years. And um, the impact in the total comes to about $45 per $300,000 household. So that's a serial state house note paying over five years. And my, um, investment advisor, no, my, my loan advisor says that she's put a couple of serial state house notes out to bid lately and nobody's bid on them. So the market is so volatile right now that nobody wants to go out five years. So she was, um, and so the impact analysis I gave you was based on a four and a quarter percent interest. Now, I think I have uh, a couple of good relationships with banks that we that hold some of our money, and I do believe I can get a bid. Uh, I don't know what the interest rate will be. I I expect it's going to be upwards of you know three four percent. What she advised is that if we could consider a three year short term note. Um, it's called a ban. It's supposed to be a, an anticipation of a long-term note, but in this case, we'd pay it off over three years. Those calculations came out to be um, the loan payments would be about fifty-eight thousand instead of about thirty-four thousand with the five-year, and the impact per household for a three hundred thousand-dollar home would be estimated at around sixty-six dollars. <laughs> So that would be paying it off in three years, again, 57, 58,000 a year at 0.8% interest is what she's saying. She recently sold some. And that interest rate, uh, uh, Jan, does it have to be rebid every year or is that pretty firm that it'll be 0.8% for over the three year period? Um, it's it's bid out front. And if you remember the, the last time we did it, they, um, they went up over a few years because of the unknown future market. They weren't willing to keep it so low. So it started low and went up over the next few years. So that could possibly happen with the five year as well. Sure. All right. So you don't know until you get out to bid to see what they're going to offer you. And, you know, if you get out to bid and the interest rates are terrible, you don't have to accept any of them. So it's, you know, you can, you can drop your fishing line and see what you find. And, you know, if that's the route we want to go, I can make some calls beforehand to the banks that I know would bid yeah. and I can, I can see what they're thinking. You don't have, and this is if you go for the state uh, house, no, I know the state you say frowns on it, but we don't have to necessarily do that. We can go the route of going with the bank privately, right? Yes. Especially for a three year period. All right. Well, I guess, I guess that's but, your call. But yeah, uh, but so it doesn't really benefit us to go with go with the bank period and not go out to bid. I mean, it's always good to see what others will offer. In the, in the last case, you know, I I thought Adams Community Bank would be the bank that gave us the best rate, and they weren't. We feel co op came to the rescue. Right, and they they usually offer pretty good rates, and I yeah. suspect that they would bid again, but I I don't know. I would think they would. So it all comes down to, you know, do you want to do $45 per household with a five year and, you mm -hmm. know, see, see if we can actually pull it off. I, I believe we can, but you know, she's, my advisor is telling me she has failed with a couple other towns. Um, or do we want to go with a three year note um, for 66,000? I'm sorry, $66 per household. So, Jan, so when there's a failure to uh, get any bids, what happens exactly? In other words, how do you how do you proceed? Do you have to hold off on purchasing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a failure. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. 
So you, no paving, right? Okay. I mean, you can you can you know change your terms and go out to bid again, but you might have to have another vote depending on how you write the article. There would be a special town meeting, right? Then, if it means a. It uh, could be yes. Yeah. So I, I personally, I'd lobby for the three year. I guess that's my opinion. So the interest rate on Jan on three year was only 0.8%. Nothing is ever guaranteed. That's what she told me she recently received was a, a three year at 0.8% for another town. Is that, that, Adam, that Adams Community mm -hmm. Bank, Jan? Is that, is that bank she didn't tell me what bank it was. Right. Jan, wouldn't it be possible to write the article saying with no greater than a five year term? And, and see if we could get a five year and then if we couldn't go for the three. Um, yes, I guess so. I'd have to read over the language of the article, but I think so. But the article think, didn't reference a state house note, right? Because there are two different types of notes here. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, and you can't really do an either or. DOR does not like that in a Warren article. Jan, how do you so think we should, should write the article? Well, I, I don't see a way to write the article to cover both. So I think you're going to have to decide what you want to do. The, the three years, I'd the, lobby for three years. I mean, right now, based on the yield curve, interest rates in the market, so I'd, I'd lock in three years as best we can. I agree. I would agree as well. Going to yeah, save I us know. a lot of interest potentially down the road. I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of, I, I'm kind of, you know, the the cost per home is significantly less to try for the five years. That, I not mean, really. It, if you add an interest, not really. Uh, over five yeah, years. So let me tell you the interest total. So the interest total for the five-year loan is twenty-one thousand six hundred. The interest total for the three-year loan. Now, again, these are ballpark estimates. Is three thousand five hundred. Yeah, it's much lower. So yes. the interest is significant. But what's the difference between? What's the total cost difference between the two? Options. Total cost per year. Per, and all the per, interest that's paid over the life that you're asking for. Yeah, though? yeah. Oh, so that's what I just gave you. The interest over the life of the five year is twenty one thousand six seventy five. Right. <laughs> the interest over the three year is three thousand four eighty. Plus one hundred and seventy thousand. So you pay just more. You just month, asked me for the interest. Less for the, total. the interest differential is eighteen thousand approximately. Yeah. Dan, which do you think is best? Well, you already said you think you think trying for the five year is best. No, I, I like the three year better. Yeah, three years. Right. I like the three year. We can get a much lower <laughs> interest rate. And yeah. And that, that, you know, if you do the three year, then you don't know what's coming next year or the year after. So it's maybe better to get these things paid off. Yeah, if we're having problems getting bids on five year right now in the market, then uh, I would say stay to the short end of the yield curve and go for that. Right. I would agree. I see a lot of nodding heads. I don't know. <laughs> are, there, are there any more questions? Not for me. If we could tell what interest rates really do, of course, we wouldn't be here, would we? We'd just be <laughs> right. somewhere else. But I mean, we're just based on what we're going by right now. It makes sense. Up until now, we've always tried to pay these off in one year out of out of our, you know, yeah. out of right. what we got from the state. This is, you know, this is it's our first time going. We ought to yep. be able to pay it off in three years. Well, you want to finance me to go first? Maybe we should. Sure, sure. You know? Yeah. We're the, we're, we're the prognosticators of all, all things financially. You know? There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Brianna, Steve, and Roy, have you any further questions or discuss anything for Jan or for anyone else on this? No, I entertain the motion for three years, Alan. Okay. So, I make a motion that we approve the financing with the uh, uh, three year option for uh, go using the uh, State House note sale program. 
Uh, anyone care to second? Okay, I'll second. All right, all those in favor? Hang on, I do want to. I do want to correct you. It's not a state house note. Oh. It's called a ban. B A N. Oh, ban. A B A N. All right. For, for yes. that, my, mm -hmm. so, thank you, Jan. Let me. Uh, yep. Let me. Let me redo the motion. So I make a motion that we uh, recommend the financing of the uh, highway improvements in the amount of one hundred seventy thousand using the three-year B A N. And uh, anyone care to second that motion? I can again. All right. All well, those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. 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 So Aye. that carries 4 0 in favor. You know, and that's with the uh, three year ban. So, for the select board, any other questions? I, I see yeah. some nodding. There, nobody's talking about a debt exclusion here? Yes, it will be a debt exclusion. Okay. So, I'm going to make a motion that uh, the same motion that Alan just made for a three year option for a BAN. To fund the 170000 for paving. Second. Right, so I think we're unanimous. Phil's saying aye, Erica aye, I'm an aye. So it's unanimous. So we had, we had a couple, we have a couple other issues money related. One was the retroactive pay raise you know how much we do we want to give a retroactive pay raise and how much do we and then eventually we'll do the pay raise for this year but tom do you, can you put up your spreadsheet sure you, you think you, i mean you had columns for each of these especially for various combinations of retroactive and current year pay raises. Yep. <laughs> and my take of that fine print, which, you know, we're going to get to look at, but my take of it was it, 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 it hardly made any difference. The, the, the differences were very, very small. The only point about it, though, Bob, was that the, the amount that we were considering last year was 2%. Okay, um, so I'm not opposed I mean, to that, but and you know we're going to be doing it last year and then this year. Yeah, so I mean, I I thought two percent this year, and then you know if you want to do three percent this year, the two percent for last year because that's what it was going to be, um, and then um, if you wanted to do three percent this year, this would be the year to do it. Um, but I I don't. And what were the schools? Um, so this is year two year. The schools are 2% this year. Um, but the schools were, were 2% last year right? as well. Right. So, uh, you know, and they got all that money all this time. So, yeah. And they get raises that are not, yeah. um, yeah. the regular raises too. Their effective raises over time are significantly greater yeah. than 2.5%. Yeah. Yeah. So Tom, we're looking at these numbers that you have outlined here, the, the 6, 3, 16 and on, but it's hard to, I, I don't know what the columns mean. I think the 316, that was with, with the basic number. Yeah, with no raises, right. And then it was the two combinations of two and two and a half, and then two and a half each year. So we're looking at what we're looking at whether to do a, a, a retroactive raise for last year and how much. We could say two, we could say two and a half. I would go for category I there, but two, two and two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the uh, the change? No raises. What is that total to down at the bottom? So if we get under the bottom, yeah. Yeah. So two and two is is uh, twenty one thousand dollars more than nothing, and two and three was just one more thousand dollars more. Two and two and a half. I see. 
So it goes from 2.71 to 2.79 if we went with the richest uh, uh, formula, two, two and a half well, the and two and a half. Is, is two and a half and two and a half. But, but Phil is Which is an extra $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. Phil, what say you? Yeah, I, I would actually be okay with whatever anybody wants. You know, if it were if we're for me picking it, I would probably pick category I, or if yeah, but that would be mm. that would be two and two and a half. But I yeah, that's um, because you want to be consistent with the uh, the contracts with the grammar school. Is that is that your thought, Phil? Well, no, it's just because two is what we were going to do last year, and right. and two two and a half because. Um, uh, it's been just a really crappy year for everybody. So, and we can, this is, we're in a position. Where I, we can. I don't think there, I don't think there was a vote last year. Except yeah, to vote no yeah. raise. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, yeah. it went over not so well. I, I myself have no problem with the full, the full, uh, uh, the full freight. Two and, two and a half and, and two and, and a half. half. I, I don't have, the, the amounts of money are so, small and we i mean on the one hand i i mean i could see so you could do two and then two and a half as as a way to sweeten the two but like i agree with uh you know it's been a crappy year for a lot of reasons and uh i mean five thousand dollars over the whole town no is that a, yeah that well it doesn't include all the school school part right is uh no, it does you know, not include the schools right um, but I still think it's, you know, it's not a lot of money. That's, that's how I look at it. Of course it, it just, what it does is it deepens the precedent. You know, it's like, well, we're not going to go less than two and a half in coming years, but, um, I think uh, it's worthwhile to take into account what the staff has gone through in the last year, trying to do their jobs under the conditions of the pandemic as well. Uh, and I would agree. And, and and I, Roy, I would also say that last year with a wage freeze, we showed that that's also within our realm of possibilities and our ability to do so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's important, you know, to have decent morale. If you have decent morale, uh, you get decent work, you know. But, but last year we were living under a really unknown of how much taxes we would be able to get and whether we were going to go bankrupt or, you, right. you know, I mean, last year was a very scary forecast. Right. right. Yeah. Right before and, town and, meeting, there were articles about how how many hundreds of Massachusetts towns might have to file for bankruptcy. Yeah, it's like, and then it wasn't, and then it wasn't as bad as we expected. Yeah. You know, we were really okay. I, mean, I don't think Jan Warren is with us still, but Tom Hutchinson. I mean, think uh, last count, we got the uh, taxes for the uh, collections were about in the normal range, slightly higher. That was about it, right? Jan, I am. I am still here, and although I haven't, um, I don't have any current figures for you. It was my, through December, I think it was, like 96% collected. Yeah, nothing has changed, so I think it's going to be the same. Um, we haven't seen any decrease in tax payments. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You no, know, the, the town, the town's, the, the town's unemployment rate is finally back to within historic norms, so that's a really good sign too. Um, is this the time that we would normally do the raise for this coming year, or we just need to talk about the retroactive raise? Yes, the more we can do tonight, <laughs> the better. Okay. So, uh, for the board, then I'm going to make a motion that we support a two and a half and a two and a half percent raise for retroactive in this coming year. I'll second that. So I think we're all saying aye. Yep. Thank you. So for the Finance Committee, Steve, uh, Rihanna, Roy, have you any further discussion or questions for anyone? Just how many employees does it cover though? I just, just want to know. Does this doesn't cover the schools. No. It's to like 20. 20, that's what I thought. It's part-time as well as the full-time people. Yeah. It, okay. It's almost all part-time is what yeah, we're I'm going with two and a half, two and a half. 
That's fine. Any, any further discussion from, from anyone? Or I'll make a motion. Go ahead. All right. So I make a motion that we go with the uh, two and a half, two and a half uh, retroactive going forward for town employees. And uh, anyone care to second? Second. Thank you, Roy. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So the motion carries 4-0 in favor unanimously. Thank you. So, Tom, yeah. could you talk Thank about you very the, much. the yes. conservation land purchase that you have listed um, here? I just want to say on behalf of town employees, we thank you as well. <laughs> who, said, who said that? Oh, I was Jan. All right. Yes, much appreciated. Well, we appreciate your good collection efforts, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you. You might have a nice voice, but you probably carry a big baseball body. We wouldn't want to. Come to <laughs> <laughs> and I'll second her comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. I need to yeah, go now. Good. Thank you for your time. Wait a minute, Jen, oh, okay. not yet. Then what? You had an item not anticipated. Do we oh, do it? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, do we so, just move to that one quick? Yes, this is just a formality to sign uh, a contract that Zobrio has put forth. They need something signed each year, I guess. Um, it's nothing new. It's just my cash management program. Just so, a software contract. Yes, I've been using it now since 2013, and it's wonderful. And it integrates fully with uh, tax collections, uh, accounting, um, and now payroll. So. And they're not paying you to say this, I take it. Wow. <laughs> no, but I think they do like me. <laughs> <laughs> How many other towns are using it now? Last year, Jan, it was us in Buckland, I think, were the new new towns uh, going for this. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly. There's a couple more because I get some calls for help every now and then or, you know, for advice. Um, once our tax collection software starts growing, you know, they, we've, we've been through the beta testing and now they're starting to gain customers. But once, once that gets rolling, the two companies are, you know, holding hands. So I think the cash management program will start going forward. So for the board, I'm gonna make a motion that we sign uh, the Zobrio software contract. Second. Yes. Yeah. So I think we're unanimous. And, and this is an experience committee thing, Alan. So, so I think that's good there. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Good night. Jan, can you, can you print that out and have it on the table? I think you already did. I saw it there. Yeah, I saw it somewhere. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but um, I'll be in the office tomorrow, so I'll make sure it's there. Thank you. Sure. Tom, you had two more, two more money article, two more money issues, one for conservation land and another for a revolving fund expenditure. Yeah, the revolving fund expenditure is really pro forma. That's um, what Jan uses to pay the Medicare payments. Um, but we because we put it into a revolving fund, uh, it has to be voted at town meeting every year. So that should have been included in the in the uh, no-brainer uh, money uh, warrant articles. Which uh, budget number is that? Which account? It, it, it's a revolving fund. It, it's its own account. It's a special revenue fund. So we yeah we do it annually. It, it's it's a fairly new one. We've only been doing it for a couple of years, but but it is it is an annual thing that we have to authorize to spend from a revolving fund. But that's how she pays for the for the Medicare. It, it makes it easier for uh, managing the cash flow on her end. Any other issues there? Any questions? Is that an article number, Tom? Uh, on the, um, yeah, on the, um, I'm looking oh. at, what's, oh, 22. No. 22? Article 22, that's where I'm finding it. Yeah, oh, no, that's, um, I think that's the, the conservation land. No, um, that's 15,000 from the Medicare revolving fund. You're right. Yeah, or, yeah, 22. 
Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I just stuck it in at the bottom there. So we haven't voted on that one yet. So I'm going to make a motion that we authorize uh, to spend 15000 from the Medicare Revolving Fund. Second. I still haven't been able to find that or really follow along with what you're talking about, but I have faith. So I'll put it's, it. It's in here. I mean, we, Tom sent us a recent update of all the warrant articles and it's article yeah. number 22. I'm looking at it. That's the problem. I still don't understand it, but. Um. The town created a revolving fund a couple of years ago so that Jan didn't have to wait for payments from the federal government to pay out Medicare payments. So by having this fund, by having this revolving fund, we can pay when the payments are needed and then we get in effect reimbursed for those payments. So we put a bunch of money into it to start with and then it's self-funding? Yes. Yes. What it sounds like, yeah. 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 It feels like we're spending money, but we're really just recycling money. Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, so I'm here still and I'm listening and I can make a quick note on this. So um, every year the school department files for a Medicaid reimbursement and there's a third party company that does that for us because it's a very complicated filing. And so they charge a small fee. So we get this Medicare reimbursement that lands in our account, and out of that account, we pay the fee to process it. So it is building. Uh, I don't have the exact uh, balance on it, but eventually we can vote to spend it or disperse it to the general fund or whatever we want to do. But you authorizing me to pay 15000 just lets me pay those fees for filing. Make sense? Sure. <laughs> well, Jan, there's not the fees aren't fifteen thousand. No, oh, no. <laughs> no, it's a it's a big overestimate. Um, you never know what those fees are going to be. It always depends on the student population. Sometimes we could be hit with a big one, and we never know that. And we certainly wouldn't want to have to come back to town meeting to raise money to pay the fee for filing for a reimbursement. But you have more than fifteen thousand in the fund. I mean, you, uh, Tom, do you have the number? I don't I don't really know what the number is. I'm sure there's more than that. Do you, do you know the the account number? I don't. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, we have um, we actually have a lot of money in it. <laughs> and I, I don't know why we have this much money. We have forty eight thousand dollars in it. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. So eventually we need to decide what to do with that, whether it goes back to the school or uh, to the general fund or whatever, whatever your pleasure. We have some good ideas then. <laughs> well, so, so we're not putting, we're just authorizing Jan to spend 15,000 out of there. Right. Yeah. Up to 15,000. Yeah. Right. That's all. We're not putting money in yeah. there that comes in there from other, not from from us. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it's very unlikely I would spend anywhere near fifteen thousand. Um, an estimate is maybe three to five thousand a year, okay. an average year. Well, okay, it's good to know. But it could uh, get up over ten. Probably, yeah. It could. So I'm not hearing any good reasons for not approving this article. <laughs> so I made a motion that I heard Erica second the, the select board uh, and I'm seeing Phil nodding vigorously so I'm yep. going to take that as unanimous by the select yep. board yes so, so where is uh, so where did Alan go where did Alan go oh dear Hmm. What happened? 
Maybe his internet went down. Mm. I can text him. Okay. Mm. So, Tom, there was one other money article having to do with conservation land. Yes. Um, this is for the, um, for the MVP project, the Municipal Vulnerability Project. So this is Article and, 21? Yeah, on, on, the, uh, on the Excel sheet. Um, so this is combining two special revenue funds that we have, one of which is, um, it's been called Cricket Hill Road, uh, and that was money that came from logging, and it can only be used for conservation purposes. So because this land would become conservation land, we can spend it on this purchase. And the other pot of money was for the sale of real estate of the old grammar school, which is about $84,000. So one of them's about $20,000, one's about $84,000. Um, that comes up to $100,000 plus change. Um, and this was the package that um, has been worked on by uh, Joe Strugowski and Janet Shays, and um, th this is for helping to buy money, uh, buy land along the South River. Um, some parcels are very inexpensive. Was that oh, you, Roy? I see. What? Yeah, he's talking on the phone with Alan. Okay. Um, so you still have a quorum, even if you don't have a chair. Um, so these two pockets of money are what's being proposed in order to buy conservation land along the South River. There's another piece of property that would be a lot more expensive that we're not ready to buy yet, but we'd like to dedicate the money to that um, when and if it becomes possible to buy it. So yeah, these I, these I, th I these two pockets would go a long way towards that goal. And, and there's also community preservation money um, being um, proposed to spend on this uh, either out of the open space fund or the unbudgeted reserve, depending on how much money there's available in the open space reserve. So that's um, Article so 20, number A. Yeah, and, and we're, so we're trying to put together a whole bunch of different sources of funding to help out with this big um, municipal vulnerability plan, uh, land acquisition and flood it's all for flood mitigation along the south river i i, I really I, I i definitely question the timing of this and the strategic approach that this article represents so um i don't really understand why you'd want because you're, you're putting this money into the general fund to make these purchases and then there's going to be a subsequent vote at another time, whether to make the purchase or not. And so I mean, to me, you make the purchase, you make the pill of the purchase easier to swallow if you have this, this uh, whatever, hundred and whatever, hundred and something thousand to, 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 to say, okay, we can do it this way before we go into assessments. Once you go ahead and do it in this town meeting, then you're no longer going to have that to raise in the future. You're just going to have the hard sell of buying the land with the money already being in the in, in the general fund. So that if they say no, then it's part of the general fund. So I, I, I don't know. The, 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 the town could vote to put that money in 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 some of the things. It, it's going to be it's going to be in a special account that's waiting 
to buy land along the South River. But it's still going to require an affirmative vote to buy that land at a subsequent town meeting. Right. In order to make an offer on that land, you've got to be able to pay for it. But you can't pay for it until the town meeting votes to buy it. No matter what. Right. No and, you, what. And, and you can't bring it to town meeting until you have money to pay for it. But we already have that money. And you just made it. You, you made the sell of it at the future town meeting harder by hiding the fact that it's available because you're approving it here. It's not available until it's approved. So what happens to that money if we don't approve Article 21? It just it just sits where it is. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, it is it is. And then we are not in a position to make an offer to purchase property. Okay. Using that money that's because I, the town meeting true. has, has not agreed. town meeting has not agreed that that's a purpose that it wants that money to 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 be spent on. But it still won't agree <laughs> until there, there's a, a vote to buy it. it and, and and the idea, you know, any any contract that you sign on behalf of a town to buy real estate is completely hundred percent contingent upon a town meeting vote doesn't matter what money you have in the bank or where that money comes from. You can't give it to the people until town meeting votes for it. And you it can't have the town meeting it vote until it's available. It's already available. No, Phil, are it you is arguing? not available for the purchase of land. Town meeting has to agree that it can be used to purchase land or we don't have anything to offer. So are, are you arguing that in the same town meeting that we have the agreement to purchase the land, we also have this article? Yes. So in other words, we have two separate articles, this article followed by one that would say we want to buy the land. Yeah, I think it is or a bad strategic choice. all in one article. Yeah, I, th I think it's a bad strategic choice to separate them. And, and it increases the chance that they're going to say no early on when, 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 the, when it's not ripe for their consideration, the overall project. So we can't make an offer to purchase until... Can we make that offer we, contingent we, upon passing the article? Of course you can make an offer to purchase. It's, I don't understand that. It doesn't matter where where the town has its money. It, it's capacity. not a good it's not a good faith offer unless the money can be spent on that for that purpose. Of course, it's a good faith offer. It's an offer contingent upon town meeting approval, no matter where the money is. I don't understand that. Um, oh, okay, I, I I I see what you're arguing. And most purchase and sale for real estate is subject to financing anyway, so that's just that. The, um, this, this yeah, is, so, so it also it also could not be used to purchase any other land for similar purchases for for for, sim for a similar purpose along the river. But doesn't this and this also uh, doesn't it show the uh, seller that? Um, it's it, that there is, in fact, good faith and the ability to to follow through. Um, no, someone knows all about this already. Oh well, okay. <laughs> well, it, it, Phil, just can you say again what you think the disadvantage is if we if we present this as an article? The disadvantage is um, it if you're. If you're trying to show um, in the future that that, that purchasing a, the, a property is a good idea, it's uh, you know, th and and you want people to say yes, it's really nice to be able to show them how you're minimizing the tax burden it, for to be able to do it, and this is a really good way to do that. Once you've already done it, then it's like, oh hey, remember a year ago? Yeah, that was that was good. That makes the, it. It doesn't work like that. It's just it's as just. You know, it's we want to do this, and this is how we're lessening the burden. And 
I, so you I just, don't think they it, should be presented together, like the sale, yeah, like yeah. the purchase of the property, and how we're financing it. Yeah, who's okay. going to remember that? Month, I, you know, I can't remember what I. You can't remember what you what we voted on at the last town meeting a few months later, and so I, I, I just think that this makes this is sort of the ace in the hole for the town to be able to purchase property. I just want to when, when you're having to show your cards to purchase the property, show the ace in the hole. Don't have it already handed into the deck in the middle, you know, before the game starts. But you whatever. don't think it's a better ace in the hole to say the town has already approved taking these two funds and using them to purchase? You know, the town... Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I think I think you're going to have a no vote because you don't... We, because this rushes the whole thing to the ta to the top and it's not right for the town's consideration. And there'll be nothing but questions with no answers. And... And we'll be, you know, it, it, it just looks like it's not ready yet. And, and I think they're going to, they're going to sniff that out and vote. No. They might table a vote too, because you're on a purchase. Yeah. Sales, you know. And all of which makes the eventual accomplishment of this objective harder. So I, I think just hold on to it. And you feel the same way about the community preservation fund. You know, that's I, the I, other part I, of the I, package. I, yeah. Um, so I, don't know, vote I, for that I, either. I, yeah, I mean, that 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 that. The thing is that the 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 I, I don't know about how uh, the, the community preservation. Uh, this is their year. This is how they do it. It's a yearly thing. If you want it in the next year, it's got to be done now. Um, but 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 I think that that it's it's gonna it's pretty dangerous asking for it and i think that um you know the it, it my preference would be to have fully formed and fully articulated proposals to bring not not piecemeal that 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 give people the opportunity to pick your idea apart before it's ready but by that you mean sign purchase and sales that are ready to go as soon as the money is available Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, an agreement, an agreement on a price, an offer that's agreed on to a seller. The, that we just need to free up the money to do it. I think one of the problems that we had in the past was the seller was that one one seller wasn't interested in going in tying up the property with that rigmarole for any period of time. Yeah, but it still would, Tom. Well, a, a town meeting would have only the one question, do we or do we not buy, rather than how do we fund it? Yeah, and if, if, if we're going to do both of these articles, we should do the question, do we or don't we buy? Because there's no point in repeating the pain a few months later. It's joy, Phil. It's not pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, be, be, because between that, that hundred and whatever and the 50, I mean, that's not quite 169, though. So I, I don't. I don't know, but um, it, 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 if if you're going to put all this on there and, and you're going to have the whole full on do we or don't we buy discussion, then ha didn't have it, you know. And well, it's, it sounds like this is this is going to trigger the do we or don't we buy discussion. I mean, for asking for fifty thousand dollars from it the for sure trigger. will. Yeah. So um, I guess the question is, do we want to have that? discussion at town meeting this year i mean i i mean because it, it is going to trigger that discussion i think i i think you're right um so i don't know are we prepared to have that discussion well can, can we make it can we make a can we approve purchasing this property without the environmental impact the 21e 
I mean, you know, I, I know there's going to be people that say, you know, how, how could you think about doing that? It's the town, blah, 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 blah. But um, I, I've looked at the history of this. I, I, I think that that's a completely unnecessary expense. I think the idea of you that you're worrying about a uh, um, uh, uh, late 18th century tannery. Yeah. Um, it, when there were no, they, they just weren't using, there were no toxic chemicals available. And is that a requirement? And a place where a bunch of school buses were parked. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're in, encouraging us to believe we're going to pass the 21E. You know, that they're going to find nothing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, we, we, we had a bad experience. People will remind us that we had the bad experience. We went for the 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 same thing on the town, the, the building next to the Conway Inn. The town paid for that. And there was nothing there. And we didn't buy it. And, and we could have just bought it last year for song and a dance. So do we have to do a chapter 21E? The town is liable for any environmental contamination on the property once it buys it. Okay, so it's in our best interest to- this is, See, that's what everybody's gonna say. There's any, I mean, if there's any question, then probably best to hedge our bets, That's right? what everybody's gonna say. It's the responsible thing to do, but I'm telling you, they're not gonna find nothing. When, Um, yeah, I mean, I, we're going to have that whole, with, with these things in place, we're going to have the whole discussion about whether to buy it. So let's just do it. Put it on there. Or take them all out, one or the well, other. I mean, we can't really, you know, have these votes without having that discussion. About right. <laughs> right. The so problem is it, that two of these properties that are uncontroversial. Correct. You, you know, so so if we could, if we could approve the twenty thousand. Yeah, I mean, is that is can we remove the controversial property from the articles and just? Well, you just postpone that discussion to the very next article, which is all the CPA stuff. So. But we don't need to pass the CPA money. We, you know, we only need. 15 or 20,000 for the other two properties. Right. But if, if, if the, if, if the purchase of the, you know, the, the big property is ever going to happen, CPA is going to be needed to make it happen. Yes, it is. And that won't happen in, for another year. Mm -hmm. So I, I, Related, but sort of not. Um, a previous draft of the warrant had the McLeish Stone House um, listed on Article 20. Did the Community um, Preservation Committee withdraw that for consideration? Yes. For consideration? Yes. Uh, I, I think that's been taken over um, and uh, by a private group. And I think it's been offered. Um, uh, there, there are actually discussions with the Historical Commission going on now about that. And GCC. <laughs> no, it, it would be, it, there's a possibility of GCC taking ownership, so. There's no possibility of GCC taking ownership, I can assure you. <laughs> really? Oh, you gotta get you to work on that one though. That would really be a good solution. For whom? <laughs> for the town. And for the people so, that want that to be a writing cabin. So why don't we leave the, the 50,000 in the CPA money worded so that we can use it for the two uncontroversial article, two uncontroversial properties and leave article. It, it, it includes all of them at this yeah. point. It does. And, that, it, and, and that's, that's what we get from the Community Preservation Committee. Usually the Select Board and Finance Committee do not make recommendations on the Community Preservation Committee um, presentations in their article. 
But so we could spend the 50000 for two unnumbered, unbuildable parcels along the Shelburne Falls Road and other parcels, you know, along the river at a future time or something like that. And 50000 is is more than enough for the two other parcels that are not controversial. It is, but we want the rest of it to be able to be spendable at a future time for the other parcel. Okay, so do we just have to amend that to say... <laughs> Hopefully. Tom, Tom, I want to ask you about the appraisal that we authorized in the in the first part of the meeting. Um, and that's how, yeah. what's the turn, what's the turnaround time on that? Uh, I don't know. I would imagine a month. Because, like, it, the, one of the things that we're limited by as a town in how much we pay for any property is the appraised value, and we, we're stuck. We're limited in proposal purchasing price by a ratio or a percentage of the appraised value. That particular formulation um, doesn't hold. Uh, that's only for cities. And we do have town council's opinion on that. Okay. Um, however, there's, 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 there's a different issue regarding appraisals um, that I'm, I'm not as uh, conversant with. That was rather cryptic. Okay. So we're not getting anywhere here. Well, um, I don't know. Um, well, one one thing we could do is just to make it very broad and say for for conservation properties along the South River. Yeah. And and you know this this MVP project has identified multiple sites more than the ones that more than the three that we're talking about now. Right. So we could leave that in the fifty thousand dollars and leave out Article Twenty One to include that during the town meeting where we actually decide on whether to buy the property. We can only vote on what CPA sends us. We're voting on a CPA article before the CPA approves it. And then we're suggesting changes no. in what the article should say. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we don't change the community preservation one. We, we can change the one that says, um, you know, right now it says, um, you know, for purchasing 69 Main Street and or other properties along the South River for conservation purposes. Um, I think we could say for purchasing properties along the South River for conservation pur purchases and then tighten it up whenever we did need to make a deal on a particular piece of property when that went before town meeting. Sounds fine to me. Would that make a difference? So just, what do you think? So we just take out the specific reference. Yeah. And leave it general. I mean, that's probably still going to generate some discussion, but yeah, I, I, I prefer to leave it general. Alan, what are you guys making of all of this? You can leave it general, and the panel will probably ask the question anyway, so be ready for specifics. <laughs> well, we can tell them the specifics that we know, and but some of it's going to depend upon offers and acceptances. I'm sure, they'll get sure yeah. they'll have a history of uh, people's own interpretation of the histories of the property and the ownership yeah. and what went on and all that. And of course, any real purchase will have to go before town meeting anyway. So, yes, including in money allocated for doing it at 21 E. Okay, so we leave Article 20 alone. We change Article 21 to list the sources of the money that we're going to spend on unspecified parcels along the South River for conservation purposes. 
And I'll just clarify that Bob is talking about the draft warrant, not the Excel sheet. Yeah, I'm looking at the draft warrant. Right, right. So the numbers change, probably. Yeah. And they'll continue. Yeah, I, I, I have not changed the Excel sheet yet, but yeah. I, I will do yeah. that. I wanted to get the articles nailed down. I do like the idea of getting the town to commit to using those funds for conservation land, which is what they're for. Yeah, except the town's not committing to anything. That's the only, that's why you got a greater chance of it happening. The town's just saying they like the idea of conservation. When it comes to actually well, signing it, paying for it and taking taking you know tax paying land out of tax paying land and making it into town owned land it's a whole nother ball game and and I, I i would like to make one other change making it a little more, more specific saying for conservation and flood mitigation purposes or conservation or flood mitigation purposes okay I think that's a good move because uh, that land being privately developed in a flood zone is just unrealistic exactly okay we're good well we're gonna vote on it i think yeah so as tom I mean, just stated to I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make a, 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 a i'm gonna propose a, a, an article that 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 as tom just stated uh I don't know if you want to state it again, Tom. I'm going to state it wrong if I do. But uh, we're we're going to yeah. We're going to, go ahead. It, it's for purchasing properties along the South River for conservation or flood mitigation purposes. Okay. And that's a change from where it says for purchasing blah 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 in the current mm -hmm. article. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That. Okay. So. Is it, for the select board, so did you second that there, Erica? Yes, that's the second. Okay, and I'll vote aye. And what do you think, Phil? I think it's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, but 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 if I vote no, that's going to really doom the thing. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. And and vote your um, conscience, Phil. <laughs> um, and I'm not so interested in dooming the thing. I just think the timing is would be better having it right right next to the the, the decision to purchase but um, i i think it's a it's a great statement that we want to do this i mean what would that mean phil would that be like a special town meeting then or wait until next year that would year be like article another article saying should the town of conway purchase xyz for x number of dollars which is going to prompt the conversation like well where's that money going to come from Right, and that's what these articles, that's what the two, that's what 20 and 21 would show. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just like either way, we're going to wind up having that conversation. I mean, it's whether we phrase it in terms of, you know, purchase this piece right. of Right, I'd rather do or, it all at once than, than say, oh, remember a few months ago, we we, we said well, this is what we want to do with that money. And that's just, I, I think it's no harder to do that than we're doing now by saying we have this money in this reserve fund. Um, except that, uh, you know, we there's a whole lot of questions that we don't know right now, like um, purchase price, things like that. <laughs> that would be really good. That would be really good to know. Mm. Uh, I think it'll give us more time to find the other fifteen thousand dollars. And my other concern really is that this is subject to, this is a risky thing to put this on there because you're subject to a floor amendment that says for article 21, let's just put the period after the words general fund. And then boom. You mean a poison pen? Yeah, I mean, amendment. that's totally doable from, from because 
uh, w w just from the floor. One person with a whatever. It's totally doable. <coughs> but but for that test to pass, that's the same as the same people would vote for that as then vote no on the article. You, you know, I mean, if if that happens and it passes, that's the same as just voting down the article. It's even worse because it's taking that money and putting it back in the general fund and, and making it unavailable. Well, making it. Uh, All right, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then, then anything would just come strictly out of assessments on paper. But so, all the people that would vote yes on that would be the people that would vote no on the article the way it's worded now. And, and the other way around. It's the same vote. I think it's hard to, out, to overthink all this. <laughs> yeah. I'm... All right. Sure. Thank you. Alan, it's on your court now. Right. Uh, so, uh, Rihanna, Roy, and Steve, have you been, any of you any, any additional discussion comments? Anyone? Oh. I hear silence. So, acqui that's acquiescence. Everyone so I on. make a motion that uh, I, sh I surrender. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we have some. We have another Conway resident who's not a member of the finance committee who's, who's offering unsolicited unsolicited opinion. So anyway, I make a motion that we approve the article uh, twenty one as uh, presented by, uh, approved by the select board. Anyone care to second? <laughs> second. Cool. Second. Okay. I second. Oh, oh thank you. We have a second. Did we have, Steve, do you have any further discussion before we go for a vote? No, no further discussion. All those in favor? I vote aye. 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 So it carries 4 0 in favor. Thank you. We're very generous tonight. I'm not aware of this. <laughs> We're all agreeing thank anyway. You. Okay. So, Alan, I think that's the end of our joint meeting. If you guys are welcome to stay. I'm sorry, I missed the, uh, voting on the uh, the uh, pay rise. I mean, uh, yeah. my, uh, Microsoft uh, decided to do an update right in the middle of it. But I do guess we have to, Gary, I admit, wait, wait do, do we have to go back and get a resolution that, that we missed because Alan wasn't, wasn't there? I don't did, have to. Did you guys I mean, vote or not? I had a quorum. Yeah, you oh, had a quorum and you voted. Yeah. If you want to be yeah. on record, I'm voting in favor of it. The two and okay. a half. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'll put it down for four to zero. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes. We're very generous tonight. So we've, we, Tom, we did one item not anticipated. That was Jan. Is there any other one? I do not have one. So do you have a town administrator update? Yes, I do. Uh, regarding uh, the letter of support approved earlier for a possible grant for a downtown wastewater system, the state now lumps 10 or so grant programs, including Mass Works, into one application, the One Stop program, so that any related grant programs may be brought into the package if that seems appropriate. The expression of interest, or EOI, Joe Strugowski is filing, gives the state a chance to weigh in on the proposal before its submission so it can suggest tweaks that might make it more likely to be funded. Uh, and, and actually, I'll note that this, is, this was an item of business that we were supposed to go over before, but we actually haven't covered. Uh, there's there's uh, that and an update on Jermaine Fund scholarships. Oh, right. We skipped over um, it. Thank you. But but you you approved the concept before, so I'm I'm explaining it now. Um, uh, so the state gets the chance to weigh in on the proposal before its submission, so it can suggest tweaks that might make it more likely to be funded. This will be the case going forward, so please keep this in mind, especially when considering grant proposals for the downtown area. The highway supervisor reports that there were two bad patches of mud in town, one on East Guinea Road and one on South Park Road. Both seem to be drying up now, and this week should see the end of those particular problems. 
The town has been approached by Habitat for Humanity regarding their acquisition of a parcel in Conway on which they'd like to build a house for affordable housing. They will be available to meet with you either April 19th or 26th. And finally, we have received our quarterly report from Colonial regarding our aggregation program. There have been 667 meters participating, and the savings have been growing since January as the gap between Eversource and the standard Dynagy plan has increased from a tenth of a cent to almost a cent. So that's great news for Conway residents in the aggregation program. And that's what I have for my update. That's per kilowatt hour, not not in total for the whole town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. So there's a, there is an interesting uh, core, uh, uh, thing in common between the Habitat for Humanity and the project that we have just been spending all this time about the person. Yeah, I don't. I, I guess you know that, Bob, right? Oh, did Evans donate that property to Habitat? Yes. No, I don't know anything about that. Yes. The property we're talking about? No, a different property in Conway. Oh. Great. But but you know, so but Habitat for Humanity, they the Franklin Tech has a the tech program has a long-standing relationship with them to do their work, but we're kind of next in line with the same Franklin Tech workers to finish our garage. So we yeah. got to make sure that Habitat for Humanity doesn't beat us out for that labor first. We need first oh. dibs on that. Yeah. But they I know there's a lot of, probably a homeless family somewhere that disagrees. But They built a great house right up near me that uh, Jason Silverman lives in right now, but very well built, wonderful house. We have two things we didn't do under new business that we skipped over them. So one had to do with uh, the Germain Fund scholarships. So Jan sent a note, or Tom sent us all a note from Jan, looking at the amount of money that we have to offer for Germain scholarships. And also, I believe we only got two, two requests for scholarship money. Really? So yes. Really? Now, the, de the deadline is not till April 15th, so we could get more. So, so we'll be back uh, with with the total number of applications we have after April fifteenth, and uh, you can have a meeting to distribute uh, whatever funds you need to. And I, I would suggest that this would be a really good year to try to start building that fund back up again, and not spend all of the interest on um, on the scholarships. Yeah, we keep depleting that fund and and. Uh... So we're only getting a small amount of interest. And if we had a lot of a lot of kids applying for scholarships, we couldn't give them very much. And so the interest that we've earned is this ninety eight hundred? The interest that it earned, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And the other one had to do a letter in support of using American Rescue Plan money for the downtown wastewater treatment plant. So that was the, the, what Joe talked about it. We voted on this last week. And we just uh, sign it. There, there will be a letter on the table for us to sign uh, tomorrow morning. Yes, yeah. there is. Great. Um, any select board members, comments, or concerns? Well, just, just to let you know that, um, just to, to follow along with what Tom had sent us about that uh, Fr Frontier is now going to be doing the mowing of the, at the in front of the Conway Grammar School, which is a personally a, like a long fought victory. And, and just the way that this has always worked, the, for, the of the four towns that are part of Frontier, Conway is the only town in which Frontier sports teams do not practice. And, and there's been a, a custom since time began that whatever fields the frontier sports teams practice at the frontier mows. So for, for, for decades, frontier has been mowing the Deerfield elementary school, the, the, uh, the, the field behind the Deerfield police department, the Hurley he field in Waitley, uh, the Sunderland elementary school fields, and they've never been mowing here in Conway. And every year this came up and I'd say, and I try to get them to, Force, force sports teams to practice in Conway, 
against the coast's wishes um, so that Conway could get a field mode. And uh, because we were always just paying to subsidize all those other towns, uh, paying that benefit and never get. So this year, since they still, I still can't get them to bring sports teams up here for a whole lot of their, their time is too compressed. It doesn't work with the buses, blah, blah, blah. But um, the, they are going to to alleviate the historical generational unfairness. We are now going to get some mowing from some frontier. From They're frontier. going to mow the town office? No, yard. but but that that should save us like fifteen hundred or so or more from our annual mowing contract. You'll mow the grammar school. Yes, great. Yes, that's so, a great solution. It is. So yay! Feel like finally one one for the good guys. So, so we didn't bring it up yet, but that was the next one is to talk about mail. We did have a piece of mail from Karen Eldred, and that sounds like a great answer for that. So that's, you, can you send that answer along to Karen to make sure she gets it, Tom? Yes, and I've, I've already let Bill Hildreth at Frontier know, and he was appreciative of the observation. Thank you, Phil. Any it, it, helps, it helps to have the, a Frontier facilities guy that lives right on the Conway Deerfield town line, too. So, so, so which team is going to practice in front of the Conway Elementary School? <laughs> Any announcements? I have a question. Great. Is the Finance Committee yet to meet and join me again next Monday evening, uh, Tom? Or are we done for now? I have it that all of the items on the warrant that are financially related have been voted on. All right, well. So I'm assuming the answer is you don't have to, but please let me know if otherwise. I just need to coordinate with my fellow members. Yeah. If you could let me know. By yes, as, as uh, chair of the finance committee, you're required to attend all select board meetings from now on. So, <laughs> Especially if we approve them, right? If we decide with the select board. Yeah. And vote first. I love it. <laughs> I know. Well, in that case, uh, I'll excuse myself. Thank you. Thank you. So our next meeting is next week. Uh, next, uh, no, we have a meeting on Wednesday, and we're going to meet to interview the two uh, interim town administrator candidates. So I think that's going to start at six o'clock. The what? first interview is what six fifteen, I think. And we'll yep. have two interviews. The chair of the committee of who of vetting both interim and permanent. I was just asking. When are you going to interview the permanent candidates? Good question. I'm sorry? That's a good question. I'd like to know the answer to that, too. Yeah. Tom, do you have a you schedule? Be should be, I think, before you leave. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it on uh, for discussion at the, the, at the next regular select board meeting. Okay. But this Wednesday, we're only going to interview the interim two interim candidates right now. Right. And, and hopefully we might make a choice at the end of that meeting. Oh, yes, that would be very good, because then you have to set up a meeting to sign a contract. Yeah. Are you going to have enough time to uh, have any low overlap at all? I hope we have at least two weeks. Okay. Okay. So I make a motion that our meeting's adjourned. Second. I second, and everybody says aye. Thank you. <laughs>